and ask Martin Hidney to bring his violin and treat us to some music. And I saw Martin just a minute ago. There he is. Composer uh, Thurlow or Turloch, if you want Gaelic, O'Carolan, who uh, was born in the latter 17th century and moved into the 18th. And he was a blind Irish harper and he toured the country uh, as something of a beggar, really. Uh, he was hoping to stay at the homes of the rich and to get bed and breakfast. And if he got that, then he would name his tunes after the host. <laughs> so that jig that I just played is called Baptist Johnston, about whom nothing is known except that he probably gave Carolyn a pretty decent bed and breakfast. <laughs> and the, the, the slow tune that I started with was also written by Carolyn. Uh, these pieces are played today. And many uh, Irish folk musicians do not know which ones that they play are by Carolyn and which are not. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. He is incorporated into the folk tradition, but he really was a composer. And he must have had somebody who could see riding with him through the countryside to, to write these pieces that he was busy composing, since he was totally blind. Uh, so he's one of my heroes. I have a, 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 a collection which I have.
about to wreck this fiddle. There's a look of alarm on your face. Yes? All the McCrays are thanking you. Yay! Thank you! Yes, I kept my promise. Play that bluegrass when you play for me this morning. Steve asked me to play bluegrass, and I am now about to do it now in, in a Scottish way. Because I'm still trying to please those other two people. Here is a reel that I've liked for a long time. I even taught it to my single violin pupil, who is also my dentist. <laughs> I've told a few folks about this. We never exchange a penny. <laughs> yes, Miss Susan Cooper, it's called, and it's a Scottish reel. And uh, although it's not bluegrass, it's <coughs> word as, and it is the American. When you hear it, I think you can see how it is the ancestor of all these things. and say, now we got you fellows out here today to get you away for an hour or so from Elvis and his hound dog and listen to little George Frederick Hand. And then he got, and I was supposed to take over. And I had uh, a sonata here that is the joy of my freshman year. I have to say that if I, since this is the 50th reading and we are looking at memories of value, uh, I say that uh, nothing caused me greater 
and more lasting joy at University High School than string orchestra, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and full orchestra on Tuesday and Thursday. Plus playing extracurricular, extracurricular string quartets with Jan. Stand up, Jan. Jan was our violist, and Amy Hazelray was by, oh, played also violin. Andy did, Andy did Chuck, Andy Hazelrig. And see, it was the Hazelrig family ran an awful lot of the music in Bloomington. Do you remember Amy's mother? Yes. She led the orchestra, and she was very, very good. All right, so here's what I played for the Kiwanis Club people to get them away from Hound Dog. <laughs> Scottish uh, thing that I played with all these 
And uh, I'd like to show another example of uh, um, folk mu or classical music that could just as well be folk. He calls this piece a sonata, but actually it's more, a, a, more of a dance suite. And the second movement, he called it allegro, but he could have uh, given it the name of a dance step. Uh, this is by Telemann, very good on him using folk music. And he's one of the great underrated geniuses of the 18th century. And he used things. Actually, somebody has just come up with a, with a new record pairing numbers by Telemann with their source in gypsy music. That's really something to hear. This then is the last piece. <laughs> Thank you. 